Hello everyone, this is Prevalent Arts. Someone said that they would be interested in a tutorial video on character creation, and then someone else came to me for advice on different art tips. So I decided to make a tutorial video on how to draw. So in this tutorial video, I'm going to try and teach you different art tips I know on character creation. I hope this helps you. You'll see that I am using a drawing software, Affinity Designer, but if you prefer to use paper, then I suggest that you use a number three pencil, perhaps mechanical, and you just make very light sketches because um, with a number three pencil you will be drawing light, and then once you want to make a finishing touch to it, then you can grab a number two pencil and go over it again. But through this tutorial video, I'm going to be using this program. So right now we are in the, the draw persona which is the vector tools. I'm gonna go into the pixel persona and over here your brushes will change depending on which persona you are in. So for the pixel persona I'm gonna choose the brush tool and I'm gonna choose a brush that I like. If I choose uh, this brush um, 8 for example you'll see that there's no pressure right now but if I click this button, there will be pressure. If I draw very gently on my drawing monitor, it comes out very light, but if I press the pen down on the monitor, it gets darker. However, my monitor doesn't um, display color quality too well, so I'm gonna use this brush instead. I believe it's 16. I'm going to just be using this instead. Okay, so to get to character poses, um, you just make a basic sketch first and then you get into the full character design. Now when you draw, like say if you're going to draw a circle, you don't draw a circle just like this. Draw a circle in individual sketchy strokes. That way, if you mess up, you can just continue. And this is assuming you are drawing lightly. So if you do mess up, you'll just correct yourself in a more darker stroke. Okay, now for um, poses, I'm going to just start off with a circle for the head. And it can cannot just be... Um, a circle of any kind, it has to be in proportion. Um, for character design, usually the kids have bigger heads and adults have smaller heads. That's usually just how it works. And for the body, um, you could have another circle, but I'm going to have a rectangular shape. And the rectangular shape is going to be curved on the top. So it's not just any rectangular shape. And you'll see that the rectangle is coming down, is uh, curving downwards. And now I'll have another circle for the pelvis. And then, and rather than figuring out how to draw the legs, I'm actually going to just draw other circles for the elbows, hands, kneecaps. Okay, so this is how I start off. I don't like stick figures. So now I'm going to just connect each part. Now you get a better understanding on how to draw over this. Your brain visually sees how to make the body structure better. So I'm going to lower the opacity here, make a new pixel layer, not vector layer, but pixel layer. And now just go over this. I'm not going to be drawing the character itself. I'm just showing you how to do the poses. We're going to, like, um, the character isn't naked, but we're going to just, I'm just drawing him without any clothes just so you understand how to have the anatomy. And it kind of looks like he's squatting a little. I didn't mean to do that. And this is why you start off with a basic sketch. So if you make a mistake, you just draw over it or in a darker stroke or just use the eraser and erase regions but this is how you would start off and then you'd go for the full design and then you figure out how to make the clothes 
but you always start off with a basic <sighs> sketch first. Now let's say you want to draw a character in um, aerial view or worm's eye view. You would just have different circles overlapping one another. So here's the head. Here's the body. Here's the pelvis. Here's the leg. Here's a foot. Here's the other leg. Here's the other foot. Arm and hand. Arm, hand. Now your brain automatically sees how you would um, draw the design. But if you just start off by drawing it from scratch, you would struggle. This gives you a better idea on how to approach it. If you're going to be drawing a non-human character, like maybe a horse for example, then again, start off with basic shapes. Like here would be um, the nose. This would be maybe a head. Body, and this isn't good, but this is just showing you that you start off with basic shapes. Yeah, it looks more like a camel, but this is how you would do it. <laughs> Just start off with basic shapes and then get into the final design. This is just a very brief section, but when you're making clothes, you can't just draw it like this, have um, like simple sleeves and then a shirt. You can't just do something like that, but have a little more Put a little more work into it. So for the sleeves, maybe have it curve a little, and towards the end, have a little bit that sticks out. Then here, have a little bit of a gap. And then here, here a part that sticks out. And it says put a little more um, depth into it. Don't just draw clothes. In this drawing of a dog, you can't really tell he's a dog because there are no lines to indicate what's in front or what's in back. But if I show this, this is a better drawing and you can tell here that the nose area is in front, the eyes are in front, and the cheeks and forehead is in back. So these extra lines put more depth into the character and it is easier to tell that this is a dog, but it's not so easy to tell that this is a dog. When drawing folds in clothing, something you can do to make things look a little more believable is to create difference of color value. Here, for example, this little fold here, if I am to replicate this, and I want to have a little bump right here, I don't just have a line but have something like a little tail. So let's say that this girl was wearing a white shirt. This area right here would be the lightest shade of white. This would be the next darkest um, shade of white. And this would be the darkest shade of white. However, this may have been a wrong place to put this little fold because she is standing up straight. A better position would probably be right under here, under her arm, because this would create some stress on the clothing. So maybe there would be a little bit of a bump right here. And then you could create that tail effect like right here instead. And I always have the lightest color on the top of the tail and then the darker color on the bottom of the tail. I don't know for sure, but I think this is called a straw fold. There are actually seven different laws of folds. It's either a straw fold or a diaper fold. There, yeah, it's, then there are also zigzag folds. I forget all the different folds there are, but there are a lot.
Another example of clothing is when it comes to bending. You'll see that Angie is bending her legs. So right here is where there would be a fold because this is where the leg is bending and then completely vertical to it, it would be smoother. So I don't really need these lines here, but I could uh, keep them there, it doesn't matter. It's the same as if you take your thumb and index finger and you push them closer together, you'll see a little bit of a fold in between your thumb and index finger. And so as the closer those two um, join together would create a little bit of a fold. When it comes to shading, that is decided on where the light source is and what sticks out. So if you take a look at Muscle Dog here, you'll see that the breasts stick out and that is indicated by the shading underneath because um, the lower body um, goes inward and the upper body comes outward. So the shading would come right under the outward region and it's the same with Muscle Dog's biceps. I have shading right under the biceps. And you, the light source is obviously coming from the camera. That's where the light source is coming from for on Muscle Dog for this example. And it's the same with Dr. Mad in the background. If So let's uh, take him, bring him in front. And select him, and I'm gonna change the transparency to none. Oh, move him down. And same here. You'll see that the eyebrows are in front, indicated by the shading on the skin behind the eyebrows. The same with his eyes. His eyes go inward, so that's where the shading would be. Same with his nose, the nose is sticking out so the shading would be on the sides. Right, and then it's the same with the hair. You can tell that this part of the hair is closer in front than this part of the hair because the shading is on the hair in the back. Here the light source is coming from the right so all the, so all the shading would be on the left but on top of that you see that the character heads would be in front of the body. So right under this character's chin, I would have extra shading here. Like right here, um, behind the arm, I have more shading right here to let you know that the body is behind the arm here under the skirt. Not to be inappropriate, but this would be shading right here to let you know that um, the the skirt is on top. So it this is uh, just how you would know a lot about the shading. Even right here, notice these two lines right here indicating a fold in the fabric. So this area right here would go inward and this area right here would be outward. So that is why I had a little shading teal right here to let you know that uh, what is in front and what is in back. And then I did the same with um, Ron's um, clothes, and same with Kelly. This part of the shirt is in front, this part is in back, so that's where you have the shading. It's the same with Little Mickey's hair, this part in back. Same with Tiny Tammy's dress. Um, it gets darker the further in it goes, and there would be shading right here, right here, and then lightness here, blah, 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 blah. So these are just a few basic art tips. I wish I could cover more, but it's hard to cover so much just within 15 minutes. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. Have a good day.